Okay, I'm going to do a video just on lion's mane. So um, Robbie at Physiological Reset asked about lion's mane, and this is such a great question that it deserves its own video. Now I'm going to try to do this without any notes because I feel weird whenever people stop all the time to check their notes. So, first off, I'm not a doctor. This isn't medical advice. I'm just a guy who reads a lot. And uh, there's a couple things to cover on Lion's Bane, and it's one of my favorites. I thought it was really cool, and then I have a different view after having used it. So, here we go. First off, there isn't a whole lot of human studies on this. There's a whole bunch of animal data, which, you know, mechanistically we're like, oh, look, it increases, you know, BDNF and, you know, NGF and all these things like that, and has all these great effects in animal models. But if you know this, and this is like common knowledge to me, but maybe some people don't, a lot of stuff works in animals that doesn't work in humans. So you need to have human trials to see whether or not it actually pans out in humans. And uh, the reality is, is that of the studies on humans, uh, there's one looking at dementia, and of course there's a slight improvement. And there's another one looking at depression in menopausal women, slight improvement. Um, I don't think you can extrapolate from that that it would work for an, a normal healthy individual. Okay, so, oh, this helps people who have dementia. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that a young healthy male with, you know, good brain function is going to benefit from this. Um, this helps menopausal women. That doesn't mean that a young healthy female is going to benefit from this either. Right, so when you look at those things, you have to recognize that these people are already from a deficit, and so it improves them slightly. It doesn't even make them normal; it just improves them slightly from where they are. And you can't necessarily apply that to healthy people. However, assuming that mechanistically something's going on underneath the surface, um, you know maybe there is some small effect that's happening to you. And if you were to take this over a very long period of time, you know maybe it would have some long-term effect in producing, you know, better levels of BDNF, which would then prevent you from developing Alzheimer's later on. Now, I'm ApoE4E4, E4, homozygous, so my risk of developing Alzheimer's is has higher than in the average person, so this is finds me in a place where I'm like, wow, this would be really cool if this worked. I would gladly take that for the rest of my life if I thought that it would prevent Alzheimer's. But more importantly, and some of you know this about me, um, I was hit by a drunk driver and I suffered a traumatic brain injury which did a massive amount of damage. And it has taken me years to recover. Well, I shouldn't even say recover. Um, it has taken me years to improve from where I was, but I don't think I'll ever get back to um, my, my original baseline. So of course for me, I'm looking at my brain scans and sitting down with my neurologist and I flat out told my neurologist I was gonna do this and he's like, I don't think it'll work. And I was like, I doubt it'll work either, but, you know, I don't think there's going to be harm, so whatever, let's go ahead and do this thing. So I took very high doses of Lion's Mane. We're talking like two grams a day of uh, full body fruit. So I didn't just get the, like, mycelium stuff. I don't think that the mycelium is a good choice. In any case, that's what I took, and we just ran brain scan after brain scan after brain scan. And there's no change, no difference. Uh, I don't notice anything uh, at all. So I kept taking it. And um, if you're... Stan Efferding always talks about how many blood blood uh, draws he's had, how many blood tests he's had. I, I, I probably hold the record on that. I, um, I got blood work done a minimum once a week, oftentimes twice a week, for the last, I don't know, seven years. So I have had a lot of blood tests, and one thing I thought that was really weird, and I didn't know why this was happening, is my DHT kept going down. And that seemed odd, but I didn't think anything of it, because who cares about DHT? I mean, if your testosterone level is normal, your luteinizing hormone is normal, your follicle stimulating hormone is normal, like, okay, like, whatever, DHT, I mean, all it does is cause baldness anyways, right? That's what we're supposed to believe. So that's why people take all these 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, right? Because, oh, it's going to stop you from going bald. Um, so in any case, you know, my DHT level went down, and I kept taking the lion's mane. Honestly, I didn't feel any improvement from it, like none whatsoever. I can't even tell you, like, I had less nerve pain, because I do have nerve damage from the accident, um, and that did not improve with the lion's mane either. No cognitive function improvements that are measurable. I mean, believe me, they give me enough tests. I've taken the impact test more times than I can count. Um, I've had multiple IQ tests. They like to do those all the time to see if I guess you can lose IQ points from smashing your head in or something. I don't know. Sometimes I think they just test me a lot. 
But in any case, um, you know, my IQ is the same, impact test is the same, MRIs are the same, CT scans are the same, nothing seems to change. I had an EEG, uh, nope, still no improvement in my occipital lobe, so doesn't appear like the lion's mane did anything at all. One thing I will note is that if you take it right before bed, you will have some weird dreams, which makes me think that something's going on there, but I can't tell you what, because there are lots of things you can take before bed that cause you to have weird dreams. Um, and if you take um, any type of acetylcholinesterase inhibitor like Huperzine A, um, it will definitely cause you to have some weird dreams. Same with another thing if you're using a prescription drug, uh, things like galantamine and stuff like that, they will cause you to have some really weird dreams if you take it right before bed. So something's going on there when you take lion's mane, but I don't know what. I don't know uh, why you're having the weird dreams, because it isn't really a very strong acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Um, it doesn't doesn't seem to change that. Uh, so it's not like similar, it's not similar to things like galantamine. That's the, that's the point that I'm making here. Um, but it, it might have a mild effect, and I don't know, maybe some people are more sensitive to the, the effect than others. You know, maybe I'm sensitive to that effect. Hard to say. But in any case, um, getting back on track with my experience of using Lion's Mane and why I don't recommend Lion's Mane. So finally, after all this time, I was like, well, I'm, like, I'm spending money on this thing that clearly isn't working. And uh, I didn't notice any improvements at all, so I stopped taking it. And I felt better. And I felt increasingly better the longer I was off of it. And my blood work showed my DHT level went back up. DHT is awesome. Uh, I don't really care about losing my hair, so it doesn't matter to me whether or not I end up losing my hair. All the men in my family lose their hair. Uh, most of the men in my family are bald by 30, so I think I'm doing pretty well at 36 that I'm not completely bald yet. Um, it does not matter to me whether or not I lose my hair. Um, because, well, because like I said, all the men in my family, they're, they're all bald. So I just kind of always figured, oh, I'll probably go bald someday. But moving forward with that is the fact that um, looking through the research, uh, lion's mane definitely has anti-androgenic activity and does function as a 5-alpha reductase enzyme inhibitor. So it does reduce your DHT levels. There's also some research showing that things like reishi can also have this effect. So it turns out that using um, mushrooms, various mushrooms, have anti-androgenic effects. And if you're an athlete or you're interested in health, um, male health, I, I really don't know how much of an effect it has on women since women don't really have high levels of DHT anyways. But for men, yes, DHT is awesome. DHT is what makes you a man. It's androgenic. And um, so once I stopped taking it, my beard got better and felt better. I got leaner. I felt like my muscles were denser and stronger. I just felt more energy. I felt just better in general. As my DHT level came back up to normal, um, I felt better. So, didn't have any effect on my testosterone, didn't have any effect on free testosterone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. None of those things really changed, but that DHT level went down, and then when it came back up, I felt significantly better. Uh, so that's why I wouldn't recommend that you use lion's mane. Also the fact that it didn't appear to do anything. I took it, I didn't feel any different, uh, it didn't change any of my scans, it didn't change any of the EEG data or anything. The only thing I can report that I can definitely confirm for you is that if you take it before bed, you'll have weird dreams. That's it. If you take it in the morning, you won't notice anything. Um, and, and that's, that's all I have to report on lion's mane, and that's why... I'm going to use Lion's Mane as an example here and make a video just about it. Because one of the things I want to point out to you guys is if you're using any type of nootropic at all, like you're like, oh, yo, I'm going to take this. If you're not tracking things like your testosterone level, your DHT level, like you won't even know that it's changing those things. And a lot of these different things have data and animal studies that makes it look like it works, but it really doesn't do much in a healthy individual. Um, and I'm not a healthy individual. I had a traumatic brain injury. And still, it didn't have much of an effect. So that's just something you really want to keep in mind, is that if there isn't human data on it, there's a good chance it's not going to work in you either.